How do we overcome this, ladies and gentlemen? People will not give you feedback voluntarily. Why not? They don't want to mar the relationship. They fear your reaction. Come on, help me out here. Who feels a little bit volatile? Who feels that I firstly respond in anger? And sometimes actually people are secretly proud of that. I'm not going to go kiki to be a hand with a glove, you know? Don't talk to me like that. <laughs> they fear your disapproval. So they'd rather not say anything. They just keep quiet. It's just their body language that shows. Turning around and walking away from you while you're exploding. Or while you're feeling hurt. Or while you're feeling indignant. Or while you feel you again have been made the victim of. The martyr. That's all feedback. It's coming your way. What are we going to do with it? So ladies and gentlemen, whenever we finish with an important activity at the curtain call, why don't we ask for feedback? Make it safe for them. The moment you say, how can I do this better? You give people permission to give you feedback. On course, of course, on course, of course, whatever they're going to say to you. And I have found most people in our type of environment are generally pretty good with first giving you some on-course feedback and then tell you, but here's some off-course feedback for you as well. Things that you should be eating if you really want to take it to the next level. And I think that one neutral question to a lot of different people in your life, a lot of different relationships, could be the question that says, how do you see me limiting myself? That will be a beautiful, open-ended question for people to give you feedback on life on your relationships. How do you see me limiting myself? The second one I want to talk to you about is temperature test. Now here's the big thing. Whenever we have done something in life like that chick that sang on, on TV there, everybody's in on the secret except me, you. So in other words, something has happened at work, there was sort of a flash of anger or resentment or rejection or something that went wrong where you felt it should have gone your way. Now that person that you've been dealing with goes home and who do they tell? Their husbands. Maybe they tell some of your colleagues. Maybe they tell the mortgage originator that's visiting in your office or the Riddell person that's sitting in there because you never believe what happened yesterday. That bitch <laughs> that I'm working with, she, office next door. You'll never believe what you see, what you do. So the avoidance approach is robbing you from the essential information that you need to make a change in your life. And you're the only one who's out of the secret. Everybody knows, except me or you. Is that fair? What do you guys think? Everybody knows. You, just you don't. That's all. Well, you actually needed that information if you were aware and if you were willing to make a change. Because when we change, everything around us change. So, how do we do this? Here's the temperature test. It sounds like this. On a scale from 0 to 10, how would you rate this listing presentation? On a scale from 0 to 10, how would you rate the service I have given you during the transaction? Mr. Purchaser, on a scale from 0 to 10, after you work with me for today, how would you rate the process that we have followed and the service I have given you? When the manager sits with the agent and at the end of the process he says, after our one-on-one, -on -one, thank you for spending the time with me, on a scale from 0 to 10, how did you experience our conversation? So virtually everything we do in life, maybe your husband, maybe your wife, it sounds like follows. Honey, sorry, that's a very good term. Scott. Boki, Skobaki, Pada. On a scale from 0 to 10. Little Muffy. On a scale from 0 to 10. How would you rate our relationship? 7 out of 10 she says to you. You say, okay, that's the second part of the question. What will it be, what will it take to make up the other three points? Well, if you would maybe pick up the children twice a week from school, Make sure they have all these sports bags with them so I don't have to drive back to go fetch it again. It'll give me enough time to prepare dinner at home so I can also spend some time with you guys. That'll make a huge difference in my life. If you guys would just pick up the dirty laundry from the bathroom floor instead of me working, my backside off to serve you, that would make a difference to me. Will that make you a 10 out of 10? It will make me ecstatic. Are you guys with me? 
if you're willing to do the test and to say what will it take and become aware of the other two points, I'll give you one more example. Mr. Seller, at the end of this process, thank you so much for dealing with me. I appreciate it. I have a question for you. In order for me to become maybe a better business person, give better service in the future, on a scale from 0 to 10, how would you rate the service I have given you during the mandate period? I'll give you an 8 out of 10. Oh, thank you very much for that. If I may ask, what would it have taken to make up the other two points? Well, you guys were brilliant. Your marketing was exceptional. Your secretary, the office, everybody we dealt with was just beautiful. But you know what? I have left two messages for you, and you did not return one of them. Would that have made it a 10? Definitely so. Everything would have been 100%. But see that you asked for the feedback, that's what I want to tell you. Are you guys with me? You hear what I'm saying to you today? On a scale from 0 to 10, how would you rate, measure, what you experience, what you're feeling? And we can apply it to everything in all our relationships in life. And what we do is we give people permission to give us the feedback. So ladies and gentlemen, whenever we have this feedback, there is only one response that we could have on feedback. If you ask for feedback, you can't do anything else from today on but say the following. Here's the response to feedback. After the seller has said it to you, after the wife has said it, after the manager has said it, after the agent has said it to the manager, after I have said it to the CEO, there's only one response and it sounds like this. Thank you so much for caring enough to share that with me. I appreciate it. That is it. The moment you add anything else on, it will sound like what? Blame, defense, or justification. And feedback would have lost its value. Because in that moment where you justify, when you defend, or when you blame, you cancel out the learning capacity you have. You say, been there, done that, heard that before, sorry, I'm all knowing. Yes, but. And then the cycle stops. So, are okay, you guys with me? There's only one response to feedback after you ask for it, and it's the following. Thank you so much for caring enough to share that with me. I appreciate it. That's it. Turn around and walk away. Who's with me? Come on, guys. Everybody with me. Good. Fantastic. We're nearly done. We're nearly done. We're doing good for time, just by the way. I've already cut the talk by about 10 minutes. 